cardiology update viewers and the listeners. I'm Shadi Reyes, cardiologist at Detroit Medical Center, Wayne State University, and director of the cath lab at Harper University Hospital in Detroit, Michigan, United States. Today, we're going to bring to you a review of a recently published article at the Circulation Cardiovascular Intervention that is very related to a daily practice. In this article, we're going to focus on the mechanism of myocardial bridging, which is not a very uncommon presentation of patients in our practice, and kind of explain some of the diseases that we see on daily basis. This is a very relevant topic, and especially for a patient who comes to the uh, clinic with angina and have auto emergency room with derivative troponin and underwent coronary angiogram that showed no obstructive disease or no what we call epicardial coronary artery disease. Therefore, we have to do further investigation to identify what kind of mechanism is this disease? Is it microvascular dysfunction? Is it myocardial bridging? Or is it endothelial dysfunction? So this article kind of highlight the mechanism of diseases in sub different substrate of patients that can be seen on a daily basis in the practice. So let's dive deep to the article. So the title of the article, Characteristic Mechanism of Ischemia in Patient with Myocardial Bridging. As, as I mentioned earlier, myocardial bridging is not very uncommon, but often seen in patients who presented to the, to the cath lab with coronary angiogram and had no epicardial disease and still continue to have angina. This group of patients called ENOCA, or was called angina with no obstructive coronary artery disease. And this patient uh, oftentimes has an uh, unfavorable prognosis. So we have to understand why, and this article actually and trial help us understand this mechanism. The method of this article is very important to understand the design as well as the definition of some of the principle during this study design. Patient with ENOCA underwent acquisition of intracoronary pressure as well as flow during rest, exercise with supine bicycle as well as during effusion of adenosine. Coronary wave intensity analysis uh, was performed with perfusion efficiency defined by the accelerating wave energy divided by the total wave uh, energy in percentage. Epicardial endothelial dysfunction is defined by reduction in the epicardial coronary diameter by 20% or more during infusion of acetylcholine. Patients with ENOCA and also those with myocardial bridge were compared with ENOCA group with no myocardial bridging. One group was with coronary microvascular disease, which is coronary flow reserve less than 2.5%, 2.5 as we know, and those with normal coronary uh, with, without uh, coronary microvascular disease, which is with coronary uh, flow reserve that is more than or equal 2.5. And also for the fellows, oftentimes we get this question in the board of identif identification of microvascular disease and what is the cutoff for coronary flow reserve. Again, here's the answer is 2.5 uh, for, for low. It will be considered anything less than 2.5 is considered microvascular dysfunction. Now, let's dive now to the result of the study. 92 people were involved in the study, and these patients were all evaluated by FFR for evaluation of coronary perfusion and pressure measurement during, as mentioned earlier, rest, exercise, as well as adenosine infusion. As expected, the reference group, the normal cohort of patients, have accelerated an increase in the coronary perfusion as well as, as what perfusion efficiency during exercise compared to the myocardial bridge as well as those with CMD or coronary microvascular disease group. Now, it's very important to focus on the mechanism of reduction of perfusion efficiency in both groups, which by pointing out myocardial perfusion, uh, myocardial bridging, as well as the CMD. Let's start with coronary microvascular disease group. The reduction of coronary perfusion efficiency was driven by microcirculation derived energy in early diastole. Again, in early diastole. Whereas the myocardial bridging was driven by diminished accelerating wave energy due to upstream bridge during early systole. It was noted that epicardial endothelial dysfunction was common in the myocardial bridge, uh, more than 53% of the patients. And also, it's worth noting that 93% of the patient with myocardial bridging has some substrate of identifiable ischemia. Ladies and gentlemen, what is the conclusion of this study and what's important in clinical practice? As we mentioned earlier, the myocardial bridging uh, led to impaired coronary perfusion efficiency during exercise, which was due to diminished accelerating wave energy in early systole compared to the reference group. And also, the myocardial bridging was associated with high prevalence with endothelial and microvascular dysfunction.
The finding of this study and the mechanism that was presented is very important to understand because that's going to change the practice and change the way we treat these patients once we have evidence of myocardial bridging. Oftentimes, when we see an angiogram of myocardial bridging, we point it out to the fellows or the resident or student who's in the cath lab and as a clinical and interesting finding, but we leave it this way. At this point, and based on these findings, we have to do further uh, pressure measurements and also evaluate the coronary perfusion efficiency to uh, rule out any underlying ischemic or ischemia in these patients. I'm really delighted. I'm really very excited about the finding of this study because really it's going to help treating these patients and not just give them the answer that you have no coronary artery disease and they continue to have chest pain and angina. I hope you enjoyed this video and hope you continue to stay tuned with us on a monthly basis to come to you with most up-to-date article related to cardiology, interventional cardiology, and also other domain in cardiology. This is Shadi Reyes from Detroit Medical Center, and this is Cardiology Update.